Hi, on this video, I'm going to talk about WPF MVVM pattern. First, let's create a database called version. Inside the database, we are going to create a customer table. It has ID, name, and version. And we are going to insert field record to the table. Let's run. Now we are going to create a WPF project. And then we create a data access folder. We are going to use ADO.NET API for the data access. We need to add the system.config. And then we are going to add a customer data access object class. And then now we are going to add a folder for the entity uh, object. Inside this model folder, we are going to add a customer class. Basically, this class uh, maps to the database we just create the, the customer table and then we come back to the customer data access object class to fix the uh, reference issue still have one compile error okay and then now let's create a view model class we create a command in this MVVM pattern example, I'm going to show the command binding too. And then we are going to create a view model. And then we need to finish the coding on the command.
on this example, I'm going to focus on the model, view model, and view, which is the uh, WPF SAML and copy high. So let's uh, take a look at the model again. It's very simple. It's just a class that um, map to the database table. And then in the view model, let's look at the code. On this view model, we are implementing the iNotify property change interface because for the view model scenario, it is much simpler to implement the iNotify property change event than the uh, dependency uh, object. So in here, we just uh, in the constructor, we are creating a new command, and for the i notify property change interface, this is the uh, only m member we need to uh, implement, and then. We are creating a method called on property change method. Inside the method, we are check if the event not equal to no, then we raise the event with the property name. And then we define this uh, observable customer collection. Uh, the reason why we use observable collection is when the data change in this collection, the view will get updated. And then we have it's loaded. And then for this edit command, later for the view, uh, the button can bind to the view model uh, command. So all the code behind stuff can move to the command execute here so this way is a good way to move the view code behind code out of view to a, a standalone class like this that way we make the testing a lot easier And this is the edit command, which implement the i command. And then inside uh, the i command, there's two methods we need to implement, which is the can execute and execute. And also this uh, event handler. Inside the can execute, we just need to uh, return in which state mm, the button can be enabled to invoke the execute code down here. So basically we check if the uh, view model current customer ID is bigger than zero and the name is not known and empty then we will enable the button otherwise the button is disabled. Uh, so another cool thing about using WPF command is kind of like you automatic take care of the uh, button state for us. Okay, let's go back to the view model. Uh, can edit Basically, we check if the thing is loaded and the current model is not loaded, then we say uh, it, the candidate equal true. And then we have a property called selected index. Basically, it's like to remember the selected index of the customer. 
the current customer is the current selected customer load customer basically we just add the functionality to the view model to be able to load all the customer from database let's go to the view code behind In here, uh, we are creating a customer view model uh, object and then load all the customer uh, to this view model. Basically, load customer assign uh, all the customer to customer property here and then we set the first customer to be the current customer and then assign the view model to the data context to set up the data binding basically to enable the data binding on the same On the SAML, we have a list box, the items source bind to customers. Basically, it's the observable collection in the view model. And the select the item bind to the current customer. Select the index bind to the selected index of the view model. And set the mode to two. In here, the customer name text box bind to the current customer dot name, and we set the update source trigger to property changed. For the button, we bind the command to the edit command. So. The idea is we no longer need to hook up the click event to basically to do the uh, copy high stuff, the normal copy high stuff on on the copy high. So instead, we are going to use the command binding and let the edit command to uh, do the update customer uh, copy high logic okay let's compile it and the last thing we need to do is to add the connection string to the app config file and we can run it yeah as we can see the bonding works and then we change this the select item in the list box is changed as well when we click save and then close and reload the data is saved to the database yep thanks for watching the video